nobody thought that The Phantom was going to be quite what it was. I remember it opened in London. It wasn't the favourite uh, of, of, of the season in the sense that we came in as a sort of slight underdog and it just took off. There are people who saw the original production of Phantom of the Opera. Their children have now seen it. People have fallen in love in front of it. I mean, it's gone into the, into the fabric of legend. I've often thought that we left the original Phantom with a little bit of a cliffhanger, and I thought, well, why not do uh, a sequel to it at one point? I see Angela Ed Weber has continued the story that everyone fell in love with, you know? And I, I always thought, when I first saw it too, seeing Raoul and Christine go off at the end, that's not a happy ending to me. I always wonder, well, what would happen now? How would that marriage work? Uh, in, in, in the case of Love Never Dies, the Phantom, the theory is, the Phantom was smuggled out of Paris when he was hiding, you know, hidden from the police, smuggled out of Paris by Madame Giry and her daughter Meg onto a boat where they booked passage, unknown and undiscovered, to America. I'm going to be very careful what I say about the story because it's got so many twists that I don't want to give it away, but what I can say is that it's set in America 10 years roughly after the end of the original Phantom. And it's also set in Coney Island. Coney was a fantastic place. It was beyond anything that anybody had ever seen, a great eighth wonder of the world. And it was the place where all the freaks and the oddities went. And of course, the Phantom could be absorbed in there. And our story finds him 10 years afterwards. And he's now the big mogul of Coney. He's now running the whole place, and that's where our story starts. I believe that the secret to the success is that the story is a love story, and love speaks to every person that is alive. I truly think, and I honestly think this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard, because it's there's just something about it. You know when a writer writes something that it just works because it comes from his heart. But it also has fun in it as well and, and mystery and of course the best thing which is love. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a love story. It, it's a, a piece I'm very proud of, I have to say. Uh, I, I think it's maybe more three-dimensional in terms of the characterization than the original piece was, but this one really does develop the characters in a way that I didn't have the opportunity to do in the old one. And therefore it was a very exciting thing for me to write musically. Andrew Lloyd Webber's music is some of my favorite music to sing in the whole world. The music sort of sets, uh, matches the time and the era. It kind of goes in hand in hand. You feel like you've gone somewhere. It just develops a different atmosphere and a different energy. It has so much in it. It has massive numbers, you know, massive ensemble numbers. It has huge ballads that are heart-wrenching. All I have to do is hear some of his melodies, and you're right in the moment. When I listen to them, I cry my eyes out. And there's just no greater feeling in the world.